Hi everyone, this is Dr. G. V. R. Shashiro, Associate Professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. So today in this session, so I want to discuss about eccentrically loaded riveted joints. So how to calculate the diameter of the rivet or how to calculate the strength of the rivet when the riveted joint is subjected to eccentrically loaded. So we will discuss which procedure we have to follow, we will learn. So first of all, you should know about the eccentrically loaded riveted joint. When it is said to be eccentrically loaded riveted joint. So in previous sessions, the normal riveted joint already we have discussed. When the load is acting uh, towards its uh, center of gravity, it means the action of load so passes through the center of gravity of the riveted system. But in this uh, eccentrically loaded riveted joint, when the line of action of the load does not pass through the center of the, of the riveted system. So it means the all rivets are not equally loaded. So then, then it is said to be eccentrically loaded riveted joint. So I will show you the diagram. So due to this uh, eccentrically loaded uh, riveted joint, so the, due to this uh, eccentricity, two types of uh, shear stresses will be occurred, will be developed in the riveted joint. What are they? One is direct shear stress, another one is secondary shear stress. You also call for direct shear stress is primary shear stress. So due to the direct uh, load. And the secondary shear stress will be occurred due to the eccentricity twisting. Due to this eccentricity, some twisting movement will be occur. This twisting movement, the joint about the center of gravity, so, so in addition to the shear, so secondary shear stress will be occurred. So let uh, assume the P is the eccentricity, eccentric load. And E is the eccentricity of the loaded joint. Thus, the distance between the line of action of the load and the center of gravity of the system, that is G. So, the procedure, the following procedure you have to adopt for the design of eccentrically loaded riveted joint. So, I will explain uh, step by step which procedure how to follow for a eccentric loaded riveted joint. First, you take this uh, diagram. So, in this diagram, this is four rooted uh, plate. So, the bracket attached and uh, the rivet one, the rivet two, rivet three, and uh, rivet four. And the load is acting with a distance E. So, that is uh, eccentricity from its uh, center of gravity. So, X bar is the center, center of the gravity, distance centroid and Y bar is the this uh, distance from its uh, y, 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 X uh, axis. These X bar and Y bar, uh, these two are called as centroid points, centroid X coordinate and uh, centroid Y coordinate, centroid is G, so X bar and uh, Y bar, so X bar is the uh, X ordinate and Y is the Y ordinate. First, for any eccentrically loaded problem, first we have to calculate the centroid of the given system. Suppose here, here four uh, rivets are there. So for four rivets, first to identify the distances. So that is X1, X2 and X3. So X1 is the X1 is the distance of rivet from OY and Y1. So, distance of rivet from uh, Yx, clear? So, similarly, x2, so x3 and x4, clear? So, all these uh, values, first you have to calculate. Similarly, y1, y2, y3 and then find x bar and y bar by using this uh, centroid formula. a1, x1 plus a2, x2 plus a3, x3, so on upon by a1 plus a2 plus a3, clear? So, here uh, n is the number of rivets. 
Uh, suppose here uh, four digits are there. Suppose it is uh, six or eight. You should uh, use the given number of digits. So another diagram in this uh, B diagram shown. So the secondary shear force and uh, primary shear shear forces. Uh, how to uh, draw? And then uh, in C diagram shown resultant. How to calculate the resultant uh, force? So first uh, we will discuss about this uh, B diagram. Set so rebit one. Set so rebit one. How many forces are there? Two forces are there. What are they? One is direct shear stress. Second one is secondary shear stress F one. So what is this uh, P one? So the 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 P the, the load of the, the load acting on these four rebits equally. So that is a uh, P one. This uh, this load shared by all uh, four rivets, and then P two is the an opposite force, equal and uh, opposite to, um, force acting towards its uh, center of gravity. And then one more over here uh, written L one. So L one is the the distance that is radius between this uh, center of gravity to its. Uh, First rivet uh, center point. Similarly, the second uh, rivet point uh, L two, and the third rivet L three, and fourth rivet L four. Clear? Yeah. So always uh, you should mention you should draw these secondary shear forces are F one like this, and clockwise direction. Clockwise direction F two, and uh, F three, and F four. Clear. So here uh, E is the eccentricity, and P is the load. So here for equilibrium condition, so what we have to do, this this momentum P into E is must be equal to this is secondary shear forces moment. So then only we will calculate. We can calculate the secondary shear forces. See in this we will discuss in the coming slides, and the in C diagram, see here uh, two shear forces are there. So they calculate the resultant force between these two. So similarly, R one, R two, and R three and R four. So the here uh, and also calculate the angle between these two. So what is the angle between these two uh, forces? That also very important. For uh, design calculations, okay. So we'll explain. So what you do is two forces P one and P two at the center of gravity G of the rivet system. These forces are equal and opposite to P. So already I told you. So now one more thing here, assuming that all rivets are of the same size, the effect of P one is equal to P. Is the is to produce direct shear stress. So load on the each rivet of equal magnitude. Therefore, the direct shear load on each rivet is P S is equal to P by N acting parallel to the load. P by N. So the effect of P two is equal to P is to produce a turning moment of magnitude P into E, which tends to rotate. So the joint about the center of gravity, the moment taking uh, about their center of gravity in clockwise direction. So due to this turning moment, the secondary shear load on each rivet is produced. So in order to find the secondary shear load, the following two assumptions are made. So what are they? The assumptions uh, to uh, take the two assumptions. So in next slide uh, we will see. The first assumption is the secondary shear load is proportional to the radial distance of the rivet. The secondary shear load that is uh, take F one is so directly proportional to the L one, the radial distance of the rivet. The first rivet. The similarly F two into directly proportional to L three L two, and F three directly proportional to L three, and F four directly proportional to L four. So like this, uh, how to write? 
So under concentration from the center of gravity of the rivet system. So next, second assumption is the direction of secondary shear load is perpendicular to the line joining the center of the rivet to the center of gravity of the rivet system. So you take F1, F2, F3, secondary shear loads on the rivets, 1, 2, 3, etc. as shown in figure. Similarly, L1, L2, L3, the radial distances of the rivets, 1, 2, 3, etc. from the center of gravity G of the rivet system already shown. So once again, I will show you the diagram. So L1, L2, L3 and uh, L4, the distances, the radius or distances uh, from its uh, center of gravity and uh, F1, F2, F3, F4 are secondary shear loads and PS is the direct uh, shear load. Clear? So, next one is from the above two assumptions. So, write the equation F1 proportional to L2, L1, L2 and uh, so on. So, take uh, 2 F1 by L1 is equal to F2 by L2. So, from this equation, calculate F2. So, F2 is here F, F2 is F1 multiply with L2 by L1. Okay. So, similarly, so write down the uh, F3 condition. F3 is equal to take these two. F1 by another one is F1 by L1 is equal to L3 by L3. So, take calculate here uh, F3. The similarly, write down one more equation. F1 by F1 by L1 is equal to F4 by L4. So, by this equation, calculate uh, on this um, uh, equation F4 is equal to F1 multiply with L4 by L1. Similarly, need to calculate uh, F1, F2, F3, F4. So, and then for equilibrium condition, so write down this one, the external, the sum of the external turning movements due to the eccentric load and the internal more resisting moment of the rivets must be equal to 0. So, that is P into E is equal to F1 into L1 plus F2 into L2 plus F3 into L3. So, that you can write F1 L1 plus F1 into L2 by L1 plus F1 is equal to L3 by like this. So, the final equation you can write L1 square plus L2 square plus L3 square multiply with F1 by L1. So, from the above equation, the value of F1 may be calculated. Similarly, you can calculate uh, F2, F3 and uh, etc. Okay. The direction of these forces, these two or forces uh, three these two forces means uh, secondary shear force and direct uh, shear forces are at right angles to the lines joining the center of rivet to the center of gravity of the rivet system as shown in figure so and, so, and uh, it should produce the moment in the same direction so that is clockwise or anti clockwise about the center of gravity as the turning moment that is uh, P into E. So, we are load acting and then uh, E is the eccentricity. So, here uh, the load is, the action of load is does not pass through the center of gravity of the system. So, some eccentricity is there. So, that is why the movement to take P into E. So, the primary and direct also called as the primary shear load is direct uh, shear load. 
and the secondary shear load may be added uh, vectorially to determine the resultant uh, shear load on each repeat in the shown in figure. So it may be obtained by using the relation R is equal to square root of direct uh, shear load whole square plus secondary shear load plus 2 ps into f into cos theta. So theta is the angle between the primary or direct uh, shear load. So next one is when the secondary shear load on each rivet is equal then the heavily loaded rivet will be one in which the included angle between the direct shear load and the secondary shear load is minimum. So when, when the secondary shear load on each rivet is equal means, so first of all we need to identify which, which rivet, is, uh, rivet is heavily loaded. So that is depends upon the angle between this uh, shear load and the direct shear load and the secondary shear load. Suppose the angle between the included angle between these two loads is minimum. So then it is said to be the rivet is said to be heavily loaded. So it becomes the critical or uh, one of the rivet determining the so critical or it, it becomes a very uh, uh, it uh, involves in uh, failure of criteria this rivet. Why? Because the the riveted uh, the, this rivet is heavily loaded among the four uh, rivets. So based on their uh, included angle. So knowing the permissible shear stress, then determine the rivet volt diameter of the rivet volt may be obtained. So already you know the shear stress is equal to shear load by area. So here shear load shear load is here resultant shear. Divided by area is 5 by 4 into d square. So that you can write the resultant shear load is equal to shear stress into 5 by 4 into d square. So you may calculate diameter of the rivet. So this is the procedure how to follow for while solving the recentrically loaded joint. So these are the references I have taken. So V Bandari, RS Kunmi and RL Nautral. So in this session, so I want to discuss about eccentrically loaded rivet joints problem. In previous session, already we have or learned uh, procedure, which procedure you have to follow for eccentrically loaded rivet joints. So according to uh, land procedure, so we will solve problem now. So we will explain through uh, one problem. Here given a riveted system shown in figure, the centrically loaded lab riveted joint is to be designed for a steel bracket. Clear? So in this uh, uh, system, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 rivet, rivets are given with the uh, eccentricity distance and the load and then uh, distances are C. So C, the distances between the rivets. So how to solve this uh, this type of problem? So we will see in this uh, uh, coming up slides. So the given problem, the bracket plate is 25 mm thickness. The thickness of the plate, the bracket plate is 25 mm. All rivets are to be the same size, same equal size rivets. Load on the bracket is 50 kN. So the load is 50 kN. Rivet spacing 100 mm as shown in figure. So each rivet uh, the spacing is 100. Clear? And the and E is the 400 mm. The permissible shear stress is 65 megapascal and the crushing stress is 120 megapascal. So determine the size of the rivets to be used for the JIN 
what he has asked to determine the size. So D, how to find for the given uh, parameters. Shear stress given and the crushing stress given and the eccentricity and the load also available. So now we will see uh, the problem steps. First given data T is equal to 25 mm, P is equal to 20 k 50 kilonewtons, convert into newtons, and E is the 400 mm, and N is equal to 7 number of rivets, 7, and then uh, tau is equal to 65 mega Pascal, and then uh, crushing stress is 120 mega Pascal, convert into newton per mm square. So already mm -hmm. you, you know. 1 mega Pascal is equal to 1 Newton per mm square. So, here first given system is so one more diagram of ultra x and y and o. So, the first divide 1, 2, and 3, 4. 5, 6, 7. Clear? So, in this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. First, identify the direct uh, shear loads and uh, secondary shear loads. So, direct shear loads. So, from its uh, center of gravity here, load is acting P with eccentricity E. So, this always the direct shear load parallel to the action of load. So, that is P1, P2, and P3. So, shown in this uh, diagram, PS. Clear? Yeah. And the secondary shear load, F1 in clockwise direction, F2. And uh, F3, F4, F5, and uh, F6. And third step is resultant stress. Resultant uh, shear stress. Uh, uh, I will show you in the next slide. So, and then the uh, center of gravity. So, first identify the center of gravity from its uh, y axis and uh, y x axis and uh, y y axis. So, first of all, let us find the center of gravity of the repeat system x bar and uh, y bar x1, x2, x3. So, find the distances of center of gravity of each rivet from bovine. So, first rivet number 1, what is the distance from its uh, center of gravity? Rivet number 1, this one, what is the distance from its uh, so, what is the distance uh, of rivet from its center of gravity? So, that uh, secondary, that uh, y1, y2, y3. Determine the distances of our center of gravity of each rivet from y x axis and then apply this uh, x bar and uh, y bar form x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus uh, x4, x5, x6 plus x7. So, here area is same equal, uh, equal area. So, x bar is equal to so to x1, x2, x3, what is the x1 uh, distance? 100, x2 is 200. So, as, for, uh, as shown in figure, the x1 is what is the distance from its y1? 100, and similarly, x2, x3, x4, x5. So, substitute our values in this uh, equation, we will get 100 mm. So, calculate here first x1 value x1 is x1 is what is the distance on the center um, first rivet from center gravity from, from its y, y, y. So, y, y to one distance is 0. So, sorry here take x1 is equal to 0. x2 value x2 from the second rivet the distance is from y y x is 100. So, x, x 2 is 100. 
Similarly, x3, yes, see, x3 value 100 plus 100, that is, that is 200 from its uh, y, y axis. So, x3 is 200. x4, x3 is 200 and uh, x4, x4 is 100 plus 100, and the x4 also 200. So, that x4 200. So, like this, you uh, have to calculate up to uh, 7 rivets. So, and at x1, x6 and x7, uh, 0. There is no distance from its uh, y, y axis. So, divided by number of uh, rivets, you will get the x bar value. Similarly, calculate the y bar value. So, that is a uh, y ordinate of the center of gravity. So, here y1, y2, y3, y4, y5, y6 and y7. So, y1 is the, the distance of first rivet, the first rivet distance from its uh, y x axis. Yeah. So, what is the distance uh, of the first rivet center from its uh, y x? So, here calculate y1, y2, y3, y4, y5, y6, y7, same as uh, the pre above step. So, y5, y6 are 0 here, substitute. So, we will get y bar is equal to 114.3. So, now two values you got. One is 100 and another one is 114.3. The center of gravity of the system, the given system lies between 100 mm from y y and uh, so the g is you can write and 114.3 mm from yx. So, 100 comma here 114.3. This is your center of gravity. So, now here locate center of gravity for the given system and then calculate the remaining forces. So, in this diagram shown, the turning moment produced by the P, so due to eccentricity. So, given load is eccentrical load. So, that's why P into E. The given P is 50 into 50 kilonewtons. You can convert into newtons, 50 into 10 kilonewtons. Multiply with the uh, eccentricity. The given eccentricity is here uh, 400. The eccentricity means the distance uh, of the, the action of load from its uh, center of gravity. So, that is 20 into 10 to the power of 6 newton mm. So, again, you want to draw one more diagram with the primary is shear load and the secondary shear load. So, PS and F1 and similarly PS, F2 and PS and F3 and F4 in clockwise direction, in a clockwise direction. So, here you can find the angle between these two loads, the F1 and the PS, theta 1 and the angle between the secondary force, T2, the angle between Theta uh, 3, the uh, angle between this uh, shear load, uh, direct shear load and uh, secondary shear load, theta 3, theta 4, theta 5, and uh, theta 6 and theta 7. So, here uh, 7 uh, rivets are there. So, that uh, 7 angles and uh, 7 secondary shear loads and uh, 7 direct uh, forces and uh, 7 uh, the length radii, radius of the uh, first rivet system to Center of gravity, you have to find L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, L6, L7. Clear? So, here according to the assumption, the shear force, uh, the secondary shear force F1 directly proportional to the length of the first rivet L1, F2 directly shear uh, proportional to L2, F3, L3. F4, L4, F5, L5, and F6, L6, and F7, L7. Like this, you have to write. And then apply the assumption, two assumptions according to our theory. So, here the secondary shape rivets already mentioned at the place that their distances L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, L6, L7 from the center of gravity of the rivet system. From the geometry of the figure, now find out L1, L2, L3, L4, L5 values. From the geometry of the figure, L1, L3 are same. 
L1 and L3 are same. And similarly, L5 and L6 are same. L1 is equal to L3 and L5 is equal to L6. Similarly, L4 and L7. L4 and L7 are similar, the same length. Okay. And then L2, you need to calculate. Clear? L5 and L6 also same. So, by using geometry uh, proportions, so calculate L1, L3 and then L2, L4, L7 and uh, L5, L6. Now, equating the twisting moment, turning moment or due to eccentricity of the load to the resisting moment of the rivets. So, that is P into E is equal to F1 by L1 inside bracket L1 square, L2 square, L3, L4, L5, L6, L7 square. So, we will get uh, so value here you can write this is L1 is equal to L3, L4 is equal to L7 and L5 is equal to L6. So, that you can write P into E is equal to F1 by L1, F1 by L1 is equal to 2 L1 square, L2 square plus L4 square, 2 L4 square plus 2 L5 square. Why? Because here L1, L3 are same, equal and similarly L5, L6 are equal and L4, L7 also equal. So that the final substitution, so calculate the P value 50 kilonewtons into E is 400 is equal to F1 by L1 and uh, 2 square. 4 square and L5 square. So, here uh, finally we will get F1 is equal to 24.24 24, newtons. So, the secondary shear loads are proportional to their radial distance from the center of gravity. So, that the first equation write down F2 is equal to F1 into L2 by L1 and secondary similarly this one F4. So, calculate uh, these forces F2, F3 and F4. So, so F1 uh, place 24244 already we have calculated in a previous step. Substitute and multiply with the length L2 by L1, L3 by L1 here L4 by L1. You will get three values F2, F3 and F4. Similarly, calculate F5 and F6 and F7 by using other relations. So, actually F1 by, so L1 is equal to here. So, already have written in this uh, equation. So, F, F1 will be similarly F5 by L5. So, is equal to F6 by L6 and F7 by L7. Take these two. F5 is equal to F1 into L5 by L1. And take these, uh, these first one and uh, this six one. Okay, so apply and write the equation like this and uh, F7, F1 into L7 by L1. So, by drawing the direct and the shear load, secondary shear load on each rivet, we see that 3 and 4, 5 are heavily loaded. As for the procedure, after finding the secondary and uh, direct shear load, need to identify the which rivet is uh, heavily loaded? It means uh, critically, it's uh, so it uh, suppose heavily loaded means it is said to be critically loaded. So that is depends upon the angle between these two forces, shear load and uh, 
uh, this uh, direct shear load and secondary shear load. So, by seeing the geometry, 3 and 4, 5 are heavily loaded. See, see the diagram. So, by, say, by seeing the diagram, 3 and uh, 4 and uh, 5. 3, 4, 5. 3, 4, 5 are heavily loaded. So, here uh, angle between these two uh, very small and this one also theta 3, theta 4 and theta 5. So, by seeing this geometry you can say the 3 and 4, 5 uh, divides are heavily loaded. So, after that find the angles between the direct and secondary shear loads for these uh, three rivets. No need to calculate uh, all uh, angles of the rivetted uh, joints. So, only calculate theta 3, theta 4 and uh, theta 5. Clear? So, theta 3, cos theta 3, 100 by L3. The similarly, theta 4, 100 by 101 and uh, L5. So, you can uh, see here by seeing diagram theta 3 cos theta is equal to uh, 100 by L3. So, according to the um, geometry, you may find theta of 3, theta 4 and theta 5. Clear? So, after that, Find the resultant uh, shear load on rivet 3, rivet 4 and rivet 5. The resultant uh, shear load is R3 is equal to R3 is equal to resultant uh, shear load square root of shear load at uh, 3 whole square plus secondary shear load that is F3 F3 whole square plus 2 into ps into f3 cos theta 3. So, substitute those values and uh, you will get this uh, resultant uh, shear load on rivet 3. Similarly, rivet 4 and uh, rivet 5 calculate the resultant shear load may be determined uh, graphically. So, you can you may determine uh, graphically also this uh, uh, the shear resultant uh, shear load. So, for now, we got resultant shear load at uh, 3 is 30, 0, 3, 3, 25,684, and 33, 121. Now, identify which one is heavily loaded. So, the heavily loaded is repeat 5. So, you can say this rivet is uh, critically loaded. There at this uh, rivet, you may calculate the strength of the rivet. So, consider this rivet into design. So, the heavily loaded means here uh, the angle between these two, why it is heavily loaded? The angle between the shear load and direct shear load is very small when compared to the other uh, angles. So, you can uh, see here cos theta 3 is 0.76 and theta 4 is 0.99 and uh, theta 5 is 0.658. So, here very small angle when compared to other uh, two. So, here only you can say the theta of the 5 rivet is heavily loaded. So, so take this uh, load into consideration and then find the diameter of the rivet. The maximum resultant shear load on the rivet 5 is heavily loaded and the diameter of the rivet of wall by using shear stress is equal to resultant load at 5 by area. So, resultant load by 5 by 4 into d square. Clear? This is the shear stress. So, the R5 already calculated substitute and uh, 5 by 4 into d square d we do not know. So, find out uh, d. So, d d square is equal to this one and uh, finally, d is equal to 25.5 mm. 
So, like this, uh, we need to calculate uh, the diameter of the rivet when the, the riveted system is eccentrically loaded. Then, we have obtained uh, diameter is 25.5 mm. So, what is the procedure? So, first one is uh, first identify the center of gravity. The first step in this uh, problem center of gravity x bar and y bar, and then I to calculate the direct shear loads and uh, indirect uh, shear load that is secondary shear loads and then lengths find out L1, L2, L3, L4 so on and that is uh, according to the given uh, rooted system and then find the secondary shear forces F2, F1, F2, F3, F4 so on and then uh, apply the equilibrium condition take the moment uh, uh, about its uh, center of gravity that is P into E and equate to the internal moments of the rooted system and find out uh, uh, this uh, uh, P where this F1 and F2, F3, F4, so on relations and then find the resultant load between these two and then uh, calculate the angle between these two and ident identify the which one is heavily loaded. Clear? So, after identification of the rivet, uh, at that, uh, calculate the strength of the rivet by using a uh, shear stress uh, condition, you may determine diameter of the rivet. So, this is the procedure how to follow. So, next, uh, uh, after check, after completion of this uh, procedure, uh, problems are uh, this recentically loaded problem, you to check the joint for crushing stress. So, is it uh, stand or not? So, why? Because in our problem, the crushing stress is given. So, we need to calculate the crushing stress once again. So, this crushing stress always should be less than the, the given crushing load. So, given crushing stress. Then only you can say the about region is safe. Otherwise, not safe. Till satisfy the condition, need to change. You need to modify the parameters. So, now let us check the joint for the crushing stress. So, here uh, crushing stress is equal to so maximum load upon crushing area. So, the maximum load is R5. So, that is uh, resultant uh, load at uh, rivet 5 upon crushing area is D into T. So, the diameter, the rivet diameter into the thickness of the plate already given in our problem calculate the crushing stress. So, the calculated crushing stress is 51.95 mega Pascal. But the stress is well below the given crushing stress. The given crushing stress is 120 mega Pascal. So, this value is 51.95 less than 120 mega Pascal. So, that so the above calculated so there is then less than this uh, value so that uh, you can say the above design is safe. So, for checking purpose you have to use uh, this uh, formula. Okay. So, um, all where, whatever you calculated uh, in previous steps all values are uh, safe condition according to this uh, condition a satisfied uh, condition. So, these are the references uh, taken. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.